Hello once again, Star Wars Unboxing fans. Welcome to another episode of Darth Tuba Star Wars Unboxing Show. I'm your host, Darth Tuba, and what am I doing with an Ewok village? I mean, why do I have an Ewok village here? Sorry for the click. <laughs> I am he I'm here with an Ewok village for a very important reason. Because I've been saying for a few weeks now that thanks to some um, voter comments way back when, seeming like forever ago, about what I should unbox next, the answer came with just a few shy of just a few extra votes, uh, the Ewok pack, which is this one. Well, if I'm going to open up an Ewok pack, I got to have a place for the Ewoks to hang out. So this is kind of like a half unboxing, half shelf talk, okay? So what do we got here right now? Well, this is kind of a, a combination of a few things, okay? Uh, amongst the, the, the screen you see here is basically the Ewok Village vintage playset, okay, from the, from the 1980s, okay? Basically three tree trunks are Ewok. A little net uh, of like all of the toys and play sets I should say play sets that uh, Kenner produced in the seven late 70s and 80s I think that this itself was probably the most interactive with a lot most with the most amount of play features okay um, there are a few extras here we have my little Ewok glider and by the way this is a hodgepodge I do a lot of hodgepodge this is um, the vintage set the Glider is a vintage glider, but the Ewok in there is from the later releases in the 90s. Um, my, and, and again, there's a story behind that, and I'll share it with you. Uh, essentially, you should know that my daughter was a, um, you know, a, you know, casual interest in Star Wars as a child. And in the, in the earlier years of her childhood, you know, when you're a collector and you have a child that is likes toys... Um, they're going to walk through your collection and be like, can I play with that? Can I play with that? And I didn't want to be one of those stereotypical, you know, fanboy dads. They're like, no, these are not toys. They're collectibles and you can't play with them. I said, no, I am not going down that road. Toys were originally made to be played with. And if my daughter has an interest in Star Wars and wants to play with them, who knows how long that's going to be for. We should embrace this and we should go for it. So I said, absolutely. Here's what I'm going to have you do. I took a bin, like a Rubbermaid bin, and I put it down, and I said, you tell me what you want to play with. Anything you want to play with, I will put in that bin. And you can fill that bin up to the top and over the top, but that's your play. That's what you play with. I said, don't go keeping going after everything else, all right? Just, you know, if you want to switch stuff out, you can switch stuff out. You know, I made it really, really clear. She was pretty much open to, I mean, obviously, like, there weren't a lot of high-end collectibles when my daughter was very young, so it didn't really matter. So, and everything was already open on all the vintage stuff, so I didn't mind if she played with it. So, of course, my daughter's also into animals and loved the Ewoks. Loved the teddy bear-like quality of the Ewoks. So she literally grabbed every Ewok that she could find. And all the Ewok village and the play sets and the, and the glider and the catapults. Okay, we have two here. Oh, try to see. Can't reach one. This is the vintage catapult. Okay. And then they made a newer one that came out later. A little smaller, but a little more detailed. Okay. All of these ended up in the bin, and she played with them. So, as a result, some of my Ewoks are, you know, I have a, a one of the sashes of the Ewoks. Unfortunately, I don't remember, I don't know which Ewok wears the sash. Uh, and I moved some of the other Ewoks to other displays and stuff, but that's why it's all kind of hodgepodge. But I've always loved this playset. I always felt that this playset was by far the most complete and fun and you know it had all these cool things I mean a lot of it's kind of broken there used to be a piece of string here that you could kind of crank here and there was a a little like a little elevator a little makeshift elevator in just a few the past few days when I was moving it the string just was so brittle it just came apart so I'll have to replace that thread it has a little net underneath here it has a swinging rock swinging boulder kind of like from the movies um, the only thing that's broken on it, it's pretty much complete. It has the little, uh, you can put the figures on it and roast them over the spit, which is kind of creepy. <laughs> and then you, there is a little Ewok drum that fits here. Unfortunately, the piece that it kind of cracked off. So at some point I'm going to probably just like hard glue it to there. So it stays pretty much everything else is here. I don't think there's anything else there's that's missing. Uh, and if there are a piece or two that are missing, I'm sure they're somewhere in the collection. So um, I thought that this would be a beautiful home to put our uh, new Ewok friends, okay? And I will say this too, just a little heads up. There is another 
um, some, something you can look for online is when Star Wars ended its run in the 80s, 83 was when the last movie came out for a while, and then 84, 85, they had a few more things of toys, and then they had the Ewoks and Joys cartoon. After that, Star Wars was done. It was they, they, There were no new movies. There was nothing else coming out. So Kenner just figured that they were done with the Star Wars license for the, for the foreseeable future. But they had these molds, and they didn't know what... They wanted to see what they could use with them. Well, toy companies have a tendency to reuse toys for other molds. Um, there's a whole collectible uh, part of that. Now, and uh, the one big one that happened a lot with a lot of the Ewok toys was when the movie Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves which is the one that featured Kevin Costner and Alan Rickman and Christian Slater and a very odd Morgan Freeman, a very odd cast. Actually, it's a fun movie. I, I, I rewatched it recently and I thought, you know, this is actually a lot of fun. Um, people make fun of it kind of now because Kevin Costner did not even try to speak with an accent. They've made fun of that in other movies like Men in Tights, Mel Brooks. But anyway, um, the, the movie had a toy tie-in. So Kenner was in was in the, was the one releasing it. So they actually reused a lot of the toy molds. They reused the Gamorrean guard action figure to be Friar Tuck. I mean, obviously not with the pig face, but the body was the same. They re and the most notable is that and Ewok Village. They be they released a Sherwood Forest playset, and it's pretty much the exact same thing, except that they put like green leaf kind of uh, rooftops over each of these three trunks which in a lot of ways and people that have collected these that have actually tried to track down the Ewok village the Sherwood Forest playset and use it for Ewok village because it's more like the Ewok village when it with the with those uh you know treetops so I've not yet been able to track that down if anybody knows where I can find one leave it leave a comment um that I'm not have to I don't have to pay you know huge amounts of money for but uh even a loose even parts of a loose I would be happy to you know put put it together and build it up so anyway, they did that. The Ewok Battle Wagon became something for Robin Hood. There's a few other items. And there's been a whole thing. You can actually look them up. Maybe I'll even try to do some type of a of a of a walkthrough of that. I'd have to do some research. I own none of the the remakes of the toy, so we'll have to wait and see. But this is where we now want to do our unboxing. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna kinda move this just slightly over to the side. Like that. And we got our other pieces to it and we're gonna leave oh this also came with the throne for 3po which i always liked you know you just two way two wee blocks would carry the throne all right and then we have this okay this ewok set comes with five ewoks all right flitchy nanta tibo nisha and tippet okay i can only imagine that um, I know Nisha was was from the Ewok cartoon, and they kind of honored her here. And I can only imagine that Tippett was named after Phil Tippett, who was one of the uh, designers of the stop motion and uh, creators of the stop motion photography for the original trilogy. Now, I will say this, guys, folks. Okay, I, I do need to put a, um, I guess, a disclaimer. Okay, these packs, okay, are um, very pricey. Okay, when you buy them in the store or order them online originally, they were, you know, generally take the price of one figure, multiply it by five, and maybe, you know, tack, take about two or three bucks off. So figure 25, you know, at the time, if they were like $8 a piece, eight, sixteen, twenty, dollars 20 maybe 30 29 dollars 35 dollars 34 dollars for the set, okay? But to, because this was not one that was made um, as often, and it was an exclusive to Toys R Us, it is it is it is uh, got a high price value on eBay, okay. So some people might be commenting, "Oh my God, I can't believe you're gonna open that toy. It's like it's like priceless." And I say, you know what? And I've said this on previous episodes, and I'm gonna say it now. I paid twenty nine dollars for this toy, okay, for this set of figures. As I've paid pretty much full price for the figures that I got, all the bad package figures. Sometimes I find them on sale, but if I can find them on sale, I'll get them on sale. But they brought joy to me in their package on display. They will bring joy to me out of their package, loose, in dis uh, you know, on display with, with a playset like this. Okay, and then eventually, whether it by my own desi desire or my <laughs> my ancestors after I'm gone, uh, they will sell them in probably a bulk amount 
to a collector or to a museum or to whomever. Or maybe they'll just find their way to the, to the dump. Who knows? Um, that, doesn't, that doesn't bring me pleasure. Thinking about the value of something doesn't bring me pleasure. Unless that value is just the personal value, not the monetary value. Collecting toys should not be a monetary thing. Although I, I, I know that there are some people that disagree with that, and I, and, I, and I respect your opinion. But for me personally, I've never found joy in buying a toy, letting it sit for 10 years or 20 years, and then selling it to make a profit. I've never, ever, that wasn't my thing. If it's your thing, or if you know people that that's their job, it's fine. You know, they probably do it with more than just Star Wars. They probably do it with everything. Star Wars, Hot Wheels, He-Man, Transformers. There's a lot of lucrative things that you can do with it. But it also kind of has a dark side, which is basically people that will scalp toys. They will get the toys before they even get into the stores. They'll get the toys from a company before they can even other people can order them. And then they create scarcity when it really doesn't exist. They create a fake demand, and that's really not fair. So if you go and look for these toys online, you are going to find that they're expensive. Okay, and my only advice to you is that, well, if it means that much to you, make the, pay the price, okay? Because, it, because Steve Sansweet, okay, lo- owner of the largest collection of Star Wars memorabilia in the world, has said, and a, a Star Wars item is only worth what you're willing to pay for it, okay? So, you know, it's, it's fine. Now, now, having said that, I do sell toys. I do sell some of my collection, mostly to just put into the pot to make, to buy new toys. But, um... And sometimes the toys I sell, I, I make exactly what I paid for. Sometimes I make more money than what I paid for. And sometimes I make very little. I mean, I, I will say one of the greatest amounts of money that I made on something wasn't even a toy. It was the video cassette of Star Wars, the first release, like 1984, I think, or 83. It was when Star Wars first came out on video. Now, to look at this video, it was grainy, it was very you know airy and light and just not a very good copy didn't sound good it didn't look good in 1984 when you pop that into the vcr that was awesome because that's all you had and that's what was that was it since then they've come out with dvd blu-ray hd 4k digital digital download everything is like 10 times nicer than what that video cassette was and i said and i had him and i you know asked myself a question i said do i want to hold on to do i want to leave the space in my collection for every version of star wars that i ever get no so i sold it and i think i sold i think i i sold it for about 125 dollars which and i think i don't think i don't think i paid 20 for it so i mean that was about the only time i remember really making a, a major sale uh, and and like that, and I and I just thought that was I was not like proud of that fact. I just thought that was interesting, that that's what they did. So here I am devaluing it. But who am I really? I don't think so. So we have our Ewoks. They each come with. I mean, the backdrop was nice. It was a cool little little backdrop. Each of the Ewoks comes with um, a few setups here. Let me just give me a second here to get them all in play. Now I think what I might do with this. Okay, so this guy, I have to have my names here because I'm sorry, I don't always have them. This is Tippet. Okay, now Tippet, you can see that Tippet has like a, um, he has an, uh, you know, an option for a, um, you can do, you can kind of set him up. And I guess what I'll do is I'll, whoops, sorry. I will um, set up some photos of each of them. There's options for how to set them up. Looks like one, two, three, like four of them have, there's four alternative hoods. So I'm going to take this off. And they, all, they also have alternative spikes. And, oh, no, no. I think the spikes are um, the spikes are fine. So, I mean, that's nice. It's a little bit annoying from a collecting standpoint. That's the one downside. I mean, look, I appreciate having options. I really do. But I also feel like, you know, if you're, uh, if you're not too careful, you, uh, you're going to lose these things. But, you know, so there he is. Oh, he dropped his knife. I'll give him his knife. There he goes. So, they, so some pretty cool stuff with them. Okay, I'm gonna just uh, let's see if I can get them on display here. I'll put him on top. Let me slide this a little bit closer so Tippet can be up there with his little hood, secondary hood. Now we'll do Nisha. And I, th- I find it interesting that Nisha also has an alternative hood, but Nisha, um, I don't recall if Nisha existed in the actual Return of the Jedi movie. Because Nisha um, 
has a pink hood and pink I don't recall pink being kind of a the kind of hood that you can actually have um, in uh, natural colors I don't think you can do that so that's Nisha there he is there she is sorry and there's a se separate hood for Nisha as well uh, you know what I think I'm going to do? I think, I think I'm just going to um, do the photos to show the secondary hood, okay? Just because, of the, just because I think it's a little bit better that way. I think niches can go right here. All right. Because they're Ewoks, they're not too high off the ground, so they actually do pretty well. Oh, it looks like Nisha comes with... Um, well, I don't even know if these, these uh, you know, little horns and things of that nature, I don't even know if they are indeed... Um, meant for any one Ewok. I think that, that you can do them any which way you want. So I'm going to use, I'm going to check the Ewoks out and see which ones don't have enough going on. And I'll give them, like I just gave Tippet his, uh, his little horn. All right, next we got Tebow. Now Tebow, I think I have a Tebow here. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is the, this is the vintage Tebow. And he does have somewhere around here, I can't find it at the moment. He does have a, um, a little like satchel bag, but that's the vintage Tebow. Okay, he does have a satchel bag. I didn't lose it. It's just not here at the moment. But this is the. Um, okay, so let I me mean, give me a second here to get um, Tebow's. Uh, oof, boy. Tebow has a, a very delicate and oh my goodness, I just took Tebow's head off. Shh. But you know what? That's gonna help because I can just put his thing like that and then boop. Okay, and I just gotta get his arm through this. <laughs> Poor Tebow's head. Tebow keeps losing his head. Ugh, it's kind of disgusting when you think about it. Sorry, Tebow. Yeah, I don't think I wanna. All right, there he goes. And he gets his little hammer or his weapon. It's funny when you think about this. Just remember something about Ewoks. I love Ewoks. A lot of people, Ewoks have this kind of complicated history with Star Wars fans. I love Ewoks. I've always loved Ewoks. I thought that it wasn't enough for the Empire to be taken down. It need, the Empire needed to be taken down in the most humiliating way possible. So why not do it with teddy bears? So yay. They had the right idea. All right, I'm going to get him just making sure he's leaning back here. Yeah. Except he keeps losing his head. Why do you keep losing your head, Tebow? Sadly, that is a um, a sad, true but true state of uh, reality when it comes to collecting these little tiny guys. They do tend to uh, get a little bit. They do, they do tend to lose their heads. All right. Next up, we got Nan Nanta. All right. And Nanta, it appears... Nanta needs a needs a Nanta appears to have a second a secondary. Uh, oh my God, Nanta has a lot going on here. There are these two. I think what I'm gonna do. They came with these two. Like everyone has these alternate weapons. I'm gonna. I think they're really meant for anybody. So I'm just gonna put one in Tippet's hand here. Looks like just a stick. So that's good enough for him. And I think Nisha can use another one. This is the hard part about it, collecting stuff loose, is that these things are ine inevitably going to fall fall off, and then, you know, in ten years' time, that's why it's nice. Oh, I can't even put this in. The, let's see if I, let's see if I can give um, Tebow another hand here. Yeah, the hard part, guys, is that you know, and this is the lament. I could always avoid this lament, this issue, but um, the lament is that. These guys, and I've said it before, is that when they come with multiple weapons and multiple, you know, hands and heads, and I get it. I like it's good to have the displayable options, but man, it's also annoying because then you have to, if you, you know, then you have to sit there and try to keep track of everything. Yeah, you don't have to. I mean, at the end of the day, if it's just a toy, it's a toy, you know, and. But again, you know, as an adult, you're just, you know, we don't have the same playability factor. We're sitting there trying to uh, put them on some kind of a display. So there we go. Nanta, okay, he's got his spear. 
Got a knife. Yeah, but anyway, the complicated relationship with the Ewoks, it's, it's tough, man. Ewoks, what is the first thing they wanted to do? They wanted to eat Han, Luke, and Chewie. Can you imagine what, where the story would have gone? Nowhere. It would have been the Ewoks, the bones of Han, Luke, and Chewie, and what? Maybe Leia? I don't know. God, I mean, and it was always that question mark. Like, wow, you know, Leia goes off and runs away with Wicket to the village, and then she shows up with the dress and, her, you know, what? They happen to have a dress for her? Like, why were they going to eat Luke, Han, and Chewie? And what were they going to do with Leia? Were they going to eat her too? I, what were they going to do with R2? Why did they think Cepio was a god? Okay, we can't say he was golden. But nothing with R2? <laughs> it's just, were they going to try to eat R2? That would have been interesting. All right, so <laughs> let's, these are the things that keep me up at night. I know, I shouldn't. <laughs> Last up, we got Flitchy. And I like Flitchy. And I think Flitchy was actually, like, this what I love about Flitchy is they include the Stormtrooper weapon. Which I remember that was that one where, where the one, one real quick, less than the second scene of the one Ewok with the one gun going, yeah! And I'm like, oh boy, <laughs> they figured out how to use weapons. Okay, this is going to get weird. So anyway, that, and, and again, the, the, uh, the last two that I did, just they, but they both have um, alternate hoods. So... There's Flitchy. So I'll put Flitchy here kind of right behind Nanta. All right. And we have our Ewok village now has some new Ewoks. And that is really cool. And that will do it. I kind of went on a little bit today. But that'll do it for this week's episode of Darth Tuba's Unboxing Show. Thank you so much for, for our new subscribers. We are dangerously close to 5,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Please spread the word. And do me a favor, folks. You know, I, I'm also on Twitter and Instagram. Um, please... You know, if you got any questions, any questions about my collection, about what I like to collect, about what would you like to have unboxed, you know, there have been a few of those, but don't be afraid to shoot a question. I'm, I'm, I'm not like, you know, I'm not this YouTuber that has like a thousand, you know, thousands and thousands of comments every week, so I can pretty much get back to every one of you, whoever asks me, and I'll be certainly able to do that. So leave a comment, you know, in this time where we're all kind of sitting at home. Um, leave some comments about anything you want about my collection, about how I go about doing all this, and um, I'd be happy to answer them. All right, we got some new things that have been coming in the mail. Mail's still working, as I said. There have been a few things that I've put on order before quarantine, and have only now started to come in the mail. Be warned, as I've said in previous episodes, I'm really trying not to do a lot of um, online ordering uh, now. I'm trying to just take a break from online ordering until some restrictions are lifted just to give our postal and UPS and FedEx workers a break. Um, they should only really be going out and sending out essentials, at least for the, for, you know, for the next few weeks or months. So um, the, a lot of the stuff that's coming in now is stuff that I've had uh, that, that, that I ordered well, like months and months and months and months before COVID-19 even was a thing. So, um, but there's a lot coming in and we got a lot you know, of stuff to go, go through with a uh, new episode. So like, subscribe, hit the notification button, do all that jazz. Thank you so much for watching until next time. May the force be with you.